domestication of animals is arguably one of the most important turning points in human history. But have you ever wondered what the first domestic animals were like before we started keeping and breeding them? Let's take a look at what some of the most common ones looked like in the past versus today. Wild sheep were among the first animals to have been domesticated by humans. This happened about 12,000 years ago in the Middle East. These animals were rather stout-built, had big curved horns, short tails, and their coats were red-brown in color. They also had little body fat. Initially, wild sheep were kept solely for their meat, milk and skin. The second species of wild animals to be domesticated by humans was the Bezoa goat. It happened around 10,000 years ago in the Middle East as well. The wild goats were convenient livestock animals for early humans. These creatures were relatively small and not particular about their food. The earliest stage simply involved capturing wild baby goats and raising them right in the village or camp. They themselves were a good source of food and useful materials. Even their dung was handy. When dried, it was used as fuel. The wild aurochs was the next creature ancient farmers became interested in. Paintings of large bull-like animals that were found on cave walls are those of none other than the aurochs. The earliest domestication occurred some 10,000 years ago in the Near East. As it seems, aurochs bulls were of a black color with a white streak along their backs, and cows of a reddish-brown color. The aurochs's body build was athletic and showed a powerful neck and shoulder musculature in bulls especially. The most impressive feature of this bovine was its elongated and broad horns. Redomestication took place about 8,000 years ago in the Indus Valley. The Indian aurochs was probably smaller than its Middle Eastern counterpart, but it had proportionally larger horns. Domesticated cattle proved to be much more versatile than goats or sheep. In addition to providing food, milk and hides, these animals could be harnessed to till fields with early versions of the plough. Domestic pigs appear to be a mixture of two species of wild boar. Eurasian wild boars were smaller, leaner and more muscular than domestic pigs. Their heads were relatively long, pointed and free of warts. Their shoulders and necks were also more developed and their hair was coarser. Another kind of wild boars was domesticated in China. They were smaller, had shorter legs and appeared to be more refined than the Eurasian wild boars. In some parts of China, boars were kept in pens, separating them from wild populations and allowing farmers to create breeds that were fatter and reproduced more quickly. The wild water buffaloes are believed to have been domesticated in India about 7,000 years ago. Both sexes had enormous horns curved in a crescent, the spread of which could reach up to 2 meters. These animals were used as draft animals in the fields. Humans tamed donkeys about 7,000 years ago in East Africa, perhaps in response to a change in climate that dried the lush pre-Sahara into the Sahara. Donkeys were well adapted for life in these conditions, requiring little water and capable of subsisting on meager vegetation. Archaeologists have discovered several special donkey burial sites, which suggests that people considered them highly important and respectable animals. Though there was almost no livestock animals in the Americas, they were home to another useful animal family. Guanacos and vicunas both appear to have been domesticated here around 6,000 years ago. The larger guanacos were prized for their meat and thick hide. In addition, they performed well as pack animals. The vicuna was small in size, lived at higher altitudes and had softer fur. Both species were kept for their meat and their dung was an important source of fuel and fertilizer. The chicken was domesticated in Southeast Asia, its ancestor most likely the wild red jungle fowl. Compared to the more familiar domestic chicken, the red jungle fowl had a much smaller body mass. Roosters had bright contrasting colors. Hens, on the other hand, were quite nondescript, with their brown and tan plumage. Initially, they lived in the treetops, but the development of dry rice farming drew the jungle fowl down to ground level, where the birds nested in thickets at the edge of the fields and so got used to humans. 
Most scholars believe that the original purpose of domestication of chickens was for cockfighting, not egg production. The horse was domesticated on the Central Asian steppes approximately 5,000 years ago. Most likely, it was an extinct species of wild horse unknown to us. Another wild ancient horse was the tarpan, which may also be one of the ancestors of all horses living today. Drawings of these animals have been found on cave boards too. The first domesticated horses were likely used for food, but over time, humans started to use them for riding as well. The wild yak is thought to be the direct ancestor of the domestic yak. The domestication process may have begun in Tibet around 5,000 years ago. Wild yaks have long shaggy hair with a dense woolly undercoat over the chest, flanks and hips for insulation against the cold. In males especially, this undercoat may form a long skirt of sorts that can reach the ground. Yaks were essential to the survival of the people of the Tibetan plateau. In addition to the milk, meat and fat, perhaps the most important of yaks' byproducts in the cool, arid climate was dung. The use of yak dung was a critical factor in the colonization of the mountainous region, where other fuel sources were non-existent. Guinea pigs were domesticated from the wild montane cavey around 5,000 years ago in the Andes. Wild guinea pigs were naturally grey and extremely aggressive. The main aim of their domestication was their meat. So, we have seen that most domesticated animals are quite unlike their wild forebears. Once domestication got rolling, we didn't just change the animals we brought into our lives. They changed us too. Thanks for watching. See you next time.